and Shine, and this is the IREI View from the Top video series where we exclusively video and interview CEOs and leaders from our sponsoring firms. And today we have Andrew Smith, COO of Aberdeen Americas. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you very much. So let me ask you, as a, as a global company, how are cross-border flows impacting your business from a strategic perspective? I think what a lot of people don't realize about Aberdeen is that we're actually a, a, a true global diverse business. Um, we're 30, operating out of 37 offices in 16 countries. We have um, a complete uh, diverse asset base. We're actually the 10th largest independent manager in the world. Uh, we're the number one independent manager in Europe. And surprisingly, what most people don't realize is that we're actually the 7th or 8th largest real estate manager in the world also. And I think as a result of that, it doesn't matter whether it's in equities, property, fixed. Being so global and diverse, we're seeing a lot of cross-border flows. And actually, in fact, over the last uh, recent times, we've seen about 30% increase in our real estate uh, cross-border flows. Are you, are you seeing any resistance to cross-border flows? No, not really. I, th I think uh, one of the, the things, if you look at the U.S. over the last two years, um, they've outperformed basically just about every other region, yet cross-border flows have continued to increase. And so do you think it's sustainable, the cross-border investment globally? I, I really do. I mean, I, you know, going on from that fact over the last two years, I think what you'll find is that um, also clients are looking for more stable alpha, and as a result, what they're doing is they're going more global. And I think companies like Aberdeen and its, its diverse base are actually going to benefit from that. So when you say that, what kind of markets are they looking at? What kind of property sectors are they looking at? Um, well, I think, you know, the, there's opportunities. I mean, I think everywhere. I think global is obviously very much a, a key focus for us. But I, I think Europe, we've seen um, a lot of flows coming into Europe, even with the kind of uh, recent news on Greece and uh, the euro itself. But I think with those, what you're actually finding is that there's a lot of, uh, we are seeing a lot of flows going into Europe. And it could be actually a, a, a currency play, we think, uh, there. Are you looking at any other markets, say South America, Asia? I mean, I mean, as I say, we're in all the markets, whether it's in equity, fixed income, alternatives, property, we're, we're in all those markets. So we are seeing in different asset classes movements within all of those areas. Uh, but certainly we, we do think right now that anything kind of global is, um, whether it's also including like EMD and stuff like that, are definitely attractive uh, uh, for our clients. So let me ask you, you, you've been doing this for some time now, and you've weathered several downturns, especially the last one, the global financial crisis. Um, what have you done to help create a business that can weather these storms? I think one of, the, um, one of the things we've learned is that Aberdeen does all its own research in-house. Um, we have a r rigorous investment process, and I think one lesson is that we've stuck by that, those processes, whether it's an equities, fixed property, and I think one of the things that's really came from that is by investing in properties or companies which are well run, um, have um, a, 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 a good up potential, long term up potential, um, I think is uh, very beneficial for us. And also, I would have said over the long term that um, broadening capabilities across various asset classes um, have definitely been key is being able to sustain upwards and downwards in those. Well, you, you know, there are two ways to um, help a business continue on and, and maintain its focus. There's both the external and the internal. And operationally speaking, what have you done differently or would you look at that keeps you apart? I think one of the things that we've done uh, internally, certainly, has been we've began a number of years ago building our own global operating model and spending a lot of money on investments within that. And what's that, what that's done is generate the ability that when externally we do acquire another firm, it's a simple case of like bolting on and basically bringing it in within our single global operating model. And that's been very beneficial for us. And that's one thing I would say is in part of our broadening of the capabilities is that Martin, our global CEO, and with the backing of our board, did a tremendous job over the last five years uh, diversifying our business. So looking forward, where do you see some of the greatest opportunities and threats? Um, I think opportunities is really, is truly anything global, whether that's in equities, fixed income. But I think for Aberdeen, we see a real opportunity in real estate. 
And I think if you look at the flows recently, there's been a lot going into New York, there's been a lot going into London and uh, Paris, and they've become even more expensive. And as clients are looking more global to stabilize their returns, uh, we're thinking they're going to go more west towards Asia and the emerging markets. And I think Aberdeen, having just recently built out its Asian platform for property, combine that with the success we've had in EMD and emerging market equity, we think we're very well placed uh, to garnish a lot of the, the assets when they flow that way. As for threats, well, it's, it's funny because whenever there's a threat, there's obviously an offsetting opportunity. Sure. And I think with um, Aberdeen, because we are so diverse in our business, with, uh, as I say earlier, with Linux Equities Fixed Solutions, is I think wherever there is a threat, we probably, mo most threats, we have probably an offsetting uh, opportunity, whether it's in another region or another asset class. Any markets you wouldn't go into at this point? Um, I think one of the markets is obviously for the Russia is one of those markets which I think you have to have, uh, you know, you, you, you're going to have to be in there for the long haul, mm -hmm. very volatile, but I, there's definitely going to be some opportunities there. That's uh, one that we've certainly looked at. And what is the next step for your firm, do you see? And uh, next step for our firm is, I think we're going to expand in our global uh, footprint for property. I think that's one of the things that's very key for us. And basically a lot of um, internal growth amongst our capabilities that we already have. And just looking back, if there was one thing you could have done differently, what would that have been? I'm not sure if we would have changed anything. I mean, I think we've learned lessons from everything that we've done. Um, but I, I, I do think sticking to your guns and not changing your processes and um, has been the success of Aberdeen and you know and our investment processes and philosophy I think that's been a success and that is one thing we you, we, you just cannot change. Well thank you very much Andrew Smith COO Aberdeen Americas view from the top. Thanks very much Jonathan.